I'm absolutely delighted to introduce Christina McInerney, the General Secretary of the largest union in the country, uh, Unison. And Christina is someone who spent a lifetime organising, supporting, speaking up uh, for public sector workers, particular uh, low paid women workers in the NHS, social care and beyond. And I'm absolutely delighted that we got Christina to kick us off. So over to you, Christina. Thanks, Paul, and uh, good evening, everyone, um, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm sure all of us are delighted to be here, and that, actually, I am. It's, I am delighted to be here. It's it's actually great to be here celebrating what we all love about unions. Uh, but thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight and about some of the, the things that we've been doing in unison uh, and what we've secured for workers over the past two years. Um, you know, Hearts Union Week is such an important opportunity for us to focus and celebrate on the wins of our entire movement. Because when so much of our work on campaigning to change things that are going wrong, and we all know there's lots of things that go wrong, we often forget to make a noise about our wins and the great work that unions do. And, uh, you know, like so many unions, Unison's no stranger to winning campaigns. You know, throughout COVID, we had a, an absolutely relentless focus on safety in the workplace for our members, constantly renewing the information and advice, constantly talking to employers, constantly talking to governments across the UK on what was what was happening and what needed to change to keep people safe. We all know that COVID has been one of the biggest industrial challenges we've all faced. And you know, as well as being able to make sure our members were able to work safely, we did that because this wasn't just about our members, but about the people who depend on the services that they provide. So if we kept them safe, if we kept our members safe, they were more likely to be able to continue to do the services they do and keep members of the public and the people who rely on them safe. Uh, whether that was in, uh, in healthcare or in education or social care or in other essential services where our members work like policing or in energy supply or in the environment agencies across the UK. Um, so in the first year in lockdown, that was pretty much the, the focus was, all, was on all of that. And during the second year of the pandemic, uh, it's almost unbelievable to think we've been living this for two years. But as the vaccine began to roll out and when further waves of the pandemic hit, uh, we supported our exhausted members as they were asked to do more and more in response to COVID. And exhaustion was the word that came through time and time again when we spoke to our members, particularly in health and social care. Um, and I'll give you one example. Our survey of health staff found that two thirds of staff had experienced burnout during the pandemic and felt overwhelmed after long, intense shifts. And it was a Unison member, uh, who, an NHS nurse, who administered the very first COVID-19 vaccination, a, a really positive message within our union, uh, and to, because we used that to help encourage more members to get vaccinated. and. We've used that as well because we firmly believe in persuasion, not coercion. So we campaigned relentlessly against mandatory vaccines, along with other unions. And I'm really pleased that we, and I do believe it was the work that we as unions did that forced the Westminster government to U-turn on their plans to extend it from the care sector to the NHS. Uh, and and even in, in sectors that, that, that weren't as affected by that, by like mandatory vaccines, as workers and local councils still had to continue to provide essential services during lockdown, as, as uh, uh, you know, health and local government are our two big sectors in, in unison, our members were still campaigning on things like stopping um, outsourcing, campaigning to insource and get services back in again. And we had several really good successes during the past couple of years on this. Um, we've also been campaigning against fire and rehire because uh, we do see that even in public services. We've seen local authorities that have tried to use that and we've campaigned successfully against that in a number of areas. And now, uh, as the cost of living crisis begins to hit members hard, uh, one of the, the sort of, I suppose it's a more of an internal thing we've been doing in unison is we have our own, and we've had it for a number of years now, our own charity called There For You. Uh, we, we provide things like, uh, we provide loans, etc. I'll give, give grants to members who are facing financial difficulties. We also have a school uniform grant that gets well used, I have to tell you, when, when term starts. Uh, but th this year, we've also had a winter fuel grant 
going out to people as we've seen energy prices continue to rise. And that and that's partly because uh, not that we see ourselves at, at first and foremost as a charity, far from it, we are a fighting campaigning organisation, but we recognise that for our members, it's their whole life that matters. And we see ourselves very much as a family in unison. And so continuing to support our members and their communities is very important to us. Um, but even, you know, if you think about what's happening now, Unison will be there as we work with the TUC and our sister unions to fight against this crisis in, uh, in, in the economy, to fight against the, 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 the um, cost of living crisis that we're all experiencing at the moment. We'll be there, as, as, as Paul said, we're the biggest union. And I know that we can provide, you know, the bodies to turn out to any events that we're organising, groups on the ground, as it were, uh, working with our sister unions and the TUC in the campaigns that I very much hope will be happening this this spring and that we're already talking to the TUC about and uh, hopefully to use the TUCs across the three devolved uh, parts of the, of the UK. Whether that's in demos and rallies in cities and towns across the country or it's a big event in two or three places, London or some other big cities across the country, I can assure you we will absolutely be there. But even during this, uh, we've still been running major campaigns and successful campaigns, political and bargaining campaigns, whether that's against the police and crime bill in Parliament, uh, taking cases to the highest court. We still had some really brilliant wins in the senior, uh, you know, high courts and um, Supreme Court in, in this country on critical issues around workers' rights, uh, whether it's about fighting for national pay rates for outsourced workers, especially getting agenda for change rates for staff working in private contractors in the NHS. Uh, but during the camp, during COVID, we also had some significant wins. We pushed the government to update their shielding guidance during the height of the pandemic to give additional rights to disabled workers. And I have to say, because uh, I was involved in almost daily calls on this, we hassled the government into setting up an infection control fund in the care sector, and we made paying care workers full pay during sickness absence related to COVID, the number one priority uh, in that. Now, did we get it delivered everywhere? No, um, we reckon about one third of care workers still were it being paid full pay during sickness absence, even at the height of the pandemic. Um, I, I just touch a little bit on organising and recruitment. So when I, I've been General Secretary for just over a year, and when I was elected last year, I started several big projects across the union, focusing very much on member engagement, participation in the union, and on organising and recruitment, uh, uh, particularly among underrepresented groups like our low-paid women, women members and members in their community and voluntary sectors and the private sectors within Unison who perhaps weren't in big, well-established branches, and trying to make sure that every member had a full voice within the union and was at front and centre of all the campaigns that we do. And there's a big recognition that we need to um, look at new ways of organising and, and new ways of dealing with um, recruitment and organising, especially from the lessons we've learned through the pandemic. So I'll be honest, last year, our recruitment and retention figures were amazing. We had fantastic figures. Um, we made huge gains, especially in social care and schools. Uh, we set up direct mailing and email contacts with specific occupational groups. We have about 120,000 email addresses for social care members in Unison, and that's not all of them, but that, that's been a fantastic way of getting information out directly. We've moved more into digital organising and digital campaigning. Uh, we're holding webinars, motion-based conferences uh, on all online. And we've made huge use of our social media accounts, whether that's Facebook pages for specific groups, seeing hundreds of thousands of hits, especially on things like safety in schools. But it's been more difficult this year to sustain that level of increase that we've seen as we've seen more and more public sector workers leaving their jobs this year for, for kind of obvious reasons. They're tired, they're burnt out. So we are having a full review of our digital capacity but what's really important is that we still need that face-to-face -face contact and visibility in workplaces. So as we move back to that, uh, we'll be looking very much to, to pick up 
that work again within workplaces. We've also just launched last week a big advertising campaign in unison about the cost of living crisis to back up more traditional methods. And we're launching a new Unison College this year with a new improved offer for members, but also one that's about um, turning members into activists. Uh, I'll just finish with this. It's never been more important for unions to fight back than it is this year, as inflation's likely to go up to the 8%, when pay will be nowhere near that. Who will fight this? It will be us in the unions. And when we see the Tories in Westminster making a mockery of the sacrifices that our members have made, who will demonstrate against them? Again, us. And when the Governor of the Bank of England says uh, employees shouldn't ask for, for more money, uh, who will speak up for working people and keep that fight going for decent pay? Of course, it will be us in the union to do it, nobody else. I am absolutely convinced that we are a positive force in society. No matter what the Tories or the right-wing press might say, we make positive changes that benefit everyone. So this is the year to fight back. This is the year to speak up, to take our members with us, but to take our communities and our non-union members with us as Paul said, we need to keep growing. So everyone in this call tonight, ask a non-union colleague or a family member or a friend to join a union. Because when you're in a union, you become part of the change that actually matters and makes a difference in this world. Thank you.